The Airbus A350-2000 is officially nothing more than a rumour. Or is it? You've probably seen the media hype of a possible A350 stretch, and while Airbus had previously considered stretching the A350, they ended up shelving the idea altogether. But, after this year's Dubai Airshow, Airbus has openly brought the A350-2000 back to the table, with their CEO confirming that they are now studying a stretched version of the A350. The long-running rumours of an A350-2000 have been around since 2016, and even though Airbus mothballed the idea due to engine constraints and fear of cannibalisation of the A350-1000, they have surprisingly resurfaced the idea at this year's Dubai Airshow, with many Airbus customers showing keen interest. So then, what's changed? What has provoked Airbus to revive the A350-2000 programme? The Boeing 777X wasn't meant to be at Dubai this year, and despite Boeing focusing on getting it ready for commercial service, it actually did make an appearance. Emirates placed an order for an additional 65 777-9s. The key thing here is that should Boeing decide to stretch the 777X and build a Dash 10 variant, these 65 orders will be converted to Dash 10s. This, of course, isn't good news for Airbus. Tim Clark has refused to purchase the A350-1000, straight up calling its engine defective. And while Rolls-Royce has implemented upgrade packages and durability improvements, Emirates hasn't budged. But with Boeing exploring a possible 777-10, which would be even longer and could potentially seat upwards of 450 people, Airbus would have nothing which would come remotely close to the Dash 10's capacity. Airbus's largest offering is the A350-1000, which maxes out at around 360 seats. And because airlines are leaning towards higher capacity for slot-restrained airports, if Airbus doesn't respond to the Dash 10, they risk handing over this entire market segment to Boeing. But what would an A350-2000 actually look like? Well, of course, it would be a few meters longer than the Dash 1000, and depending on configuration, could carry up to 450 passengers, and would become Airbus's largest jet after the A380. The 2000 would likely need redesigned and reinforced landing gear, and of course a strengthened center wing box. It's easy to point out what needs to be changed, but the A350-1000 is already at its limit. The 1000 uses the Trent XWB-97, which is essentially an upgraded XWB-84 upgraded by 15%. But with such a large jump between thrust outputs on the same core, the engine is pretty much maxed out as it is. And even at that, the 1000 faces performance and reliability issues out in the Middle East with Qatar and Etihad where the hot and dusty climate has raised concerns over the engine's reliability. A stretched variant would be way too underpowered on the XWB-97, and there is no clear upgrade path for the engine, and this is the main limiting factor for an A350 stretch. So then, a different power plant would be needed, and it appears the Rolls-Royce Ultrafan might be the only option. This engine though is still in development, but it has shown promising results in tests. On paper, it beats the GE9X when it comes to efficiency, its higher bypass and pressure ratios making it the world's most efficient widebody engine ever built. The engine would likely be rated at 110,000 pounds of thrust, which is exactly what an A350-2000 would need. So if Airbus wants the A350-2000 to enter service in the 2030s, the Ultrafan is the obvious, maybe even the only, choice that makes sense. So then, is Airbus actually going to build an A350-2000? Well, there are strong arguments on both sides. On one hand, the demand is clearly there. The Emirates bulk order at Dubai is proof that the industry will shift towards efficient twin jets with high capacity to maximise revenue and make the most of slot constraints, and Airbus cannot surrender the high capacity market to Boeing. The A350 stretch would need a new engine, and Rolls-Royce needs an Ultrafan launch customer. So if Airbus were going to stretch the A350, the Ultrafan would be the engine of choice. On the other hand though, the cost would be huge. To justify the new engine and redesigned airframe, Airbus needs a solid business case with at least a few major carriers showing interest before they can proceed. And of course, they need to be sure Boeing will commit to building the 777-10. And at the end of the day, the A350-2000 hasn't been officially confirmed. But for the first time in years, Airbus has openly stated they are considering a stretch. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So what do you think? Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, then here are some more you should check out. See you in the next one.